positive is that you didn't die. Come on, surgery. My fallopian tube is. It is the 10th of October, and I have my surgery tomorrow. <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm scared. No, it'll be fine. We'll be fine. See you tomorrow. But the thing is, I'm trying to down loads of water right before the 6 a.m. <clears throat> Surely there's like a maximum that you're allowed to down. It's like if you're just sipping, then you're not gonna have much water and water digest. Yeah. I just don't like feeling dehydrated. <laughs> 6.24, we're just on the way to the hospital. I've had to finish drinking water at 6 a.m. Stopped foods at 2 a.m. In prep. I'm actually feeling okay. I'm not feeling too nervous. Last night I was feeling really nervous, but <clears throat> I'm feeling okay now. This morning I had like a bit of a flashback to when I was in hospital in Macclesfield. You remember when I had a colonoscopy? Oh, yeah. And I remember right before that, I think obviously because I've never had a colonoscopy before, right before that I was, I was on the ward and the curtain wasn't around so the nurses were like walking around and they could see me. And I just worked myself up so much I started crying and then all the nurses came over to me and were like trying to comfort me. And then afterwards I was like, pull yourself together, you're a 28 year old woman. <laughs> what was this before the Yeah, that was before the colonoscopy. Right. Um, so hopefully I don't do that. Hopefully I don't like last minute get nervous and start crying. <laughs> but this is the first time I'm having surgery at St Mary's and it's going to be a nice hospital so I'm, I'm in good hands. So the actual scientific term of what I've got is hydrosphinx. I think that's how you say it. It's basically a blocked fallopian tube um, and the blocked fallopian tube ends up like swelling. I'll put a picture on screen of what it kind of looks like. Um, so I think they're going to make an incision at the top, drain the fluid and then clip that. Um, they're going to do a dye test as well um, to check my other fallopian tube, which checks for fertility, to see if it can, the dye can pass through the fallopian tube. And then I'm hoping that they're going to excise the endometriosis that has grown since my last surgery as well because if they, I think that could like massively throw me off. You know, if I actually speak to the doctor before yeah. and he's like, oh no, we're going to leave it. I think I'm just going to like break down. <laughs> yeah, because, it's strange if they do. no, I don't think they will. Like, I'm sure it'll be fine. They're in there to look at my endometriosis. So why wouldn't they cut it off? Um, it's kind of my fault for not actually clarifying beforehand. I should have just called them up like last week or something just to make sure to e ease my mind. No. Do you actually feel nervous? No. Or are you? Mm, not nervous for you, no. <laughs> as soon as I go in, you'll forget that I'm in surgery. Right? No, no, I know you go to <laughs> surgery, but I'm not nervous because I know it's all going to be fine. Yeah, okay. I love you. You'll be fine, don't worry about it. So, um, after going to the hospital, I had everything checked. The nurses came over to me to do my blood pressure and things like that. And then, unfortunately, it was cancelled. Um, my surgeon um, called in sick because he had COVID, um, which I totally get, like these things happen. I obviously wasn't feeling angry at all. I was just kind of a bit disappointed because you kind of psych yourself up. You go through like the fasting, you stop drinking and get yourself mentally prepared for that. Um, and then, for you to literally get in hospital and then it be cancelled. Yeah, it was a, it was a lot to process. Um, but the nurses um, said that I was 
able to be squeezed onto another doctor's list for tomorrow. So we go again. Let's go. Hope, fingers crossed it actually happens tomorrow. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you. I'm thinking I could go to the gym next week, to be honest. Go for a run now, you want. <laughs> So I've just I've just come out my operation, my surgery. Liam's picked me up in the car. Got this big plush thick cushion to soften any blows because we're in the car, so you never know. Especially with Liam's driving. No, <laughs> I found a route with that. It's got no speed bump. Oh, it, it, can you click it? it? I've already planned it out. Oh my god, that's so cool. Can you no, press? No, you can't click it. I just got it. Oh, I thought you could have press avoid speed bumps. No, I just went for streets. <laughs> no, just going at a bit of speed. Basically, the, the, the news is that I've got gas pain in my shoulder. It's like acute gas pain. I think oh, that's it's what it's called. Acute. <laughs> and my last surgery, I didn't have any at all. And I don't know whether it was because of the surgery. At the end of the surgery, he actually put some liquid in into my yeah. abdomen yeah it's like you you know the in-between bits of your all your organs it's like it's, yeah it's like a liquid that stop it helps scar tissue and stuff like that but I think that because you're full with that that eliminates the gas because the gas doesn't have anywhere any space do you know what I mean yeah so I'm just telling Leah the reason why I have gas pain is because they put co2 in your abdomen to blow your stomach up like a balloon but i'm not convinced but i'm trying to find a picture of it or a video <laughs> to show him because did he really though yeah they literally did they blow, blow up, up your, your actual stomach. belly mm -hmm. i don't think you, your stomach won't stretch that much if they've got air in it like they won't go see through how do i i think they just go in the cameras add the co2 gas they, they might put a bit of air in so they can get a bit of room they can see him with the cameras, but I don't think they blow it up so they can see through your stomach. Because then they wouldn't need cameras then, would they? They would just be just looking for a big glass ball of a stomach. But I don't know, I've never had surgery, so I can't really say, but you've also never seen your surgery, I've, haven't you? No, I've watched it on YouTube. Oh. Let me just Google. As part of... <laughs> It's not see-through, yeah, but as, see. yeah, as part of laparoscopic <laughs> surgeries, gas influence in in suf, insufflation, insufflation is usually adopted to increase operative space and visualization for surgeons. But they obviously mean through the camera, don't yeah, they? Yeah, you just always <laughs> misunderstood that. That's hilarious. Ow! Oh, oh my god! It's not me. There's a bumpy road there. I was just about to say. You don't seem like you're in as much pain as last time. Last time I had to drive yeah, yeah. like one mile an hour. Yeah. And if it went over a stone, you was in super bad pain. Yeah. So that's a good sign. Maybe you'll heal Yeah, to be honest, I do feel... Maybe, I don't know what it is. You either heal quick. Either you're, you're not as... Yeah, you'll heal quick, God. It wasn't as invasive. Or your pain medication's stronger this time. Yeah. But I've got one more thing to tell you. Basically, I couldn't really speak in there, but 
when I spoke to the surgeon before the operation, which you already know, originally what they were going to do was clip the fallopian tube, drain it, and then put like a clamp, cl on, it. clamp on it. But then she basically said, right, okay, you, if you have got hydrosalphinx, which is the medical term for like an infected fallopian tube, if you have got that, there's no point that being in your body, so we'll remove it, and I need your consent for that. And so I was a bit taken aback that that because I was like, oh my God, she's removing part of my organ yeah. from my body. But I was like, fine, if that's what you need to do, I'm fine with that. Um, but she said, I'll only do that if it is hydrosalpinx, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I come out of the surgery. I haven't I, had any discussion with the doctor, but the nurse read my post-op notes. My fallopian tube is fine. What? Both. Right, so both my fallopian tubes are fine. The issue was, the issues in the surgery was that two of my ovaries were stuck to my pelvis, like wrapped what? into my pelvis with endo. So I didn't even have the original thing that I was going in for. What? I know. So how did they get that so wrong then on the scan? I don't know whether, we'll never know. But I'm thinking, what if it's the acupuncture that I've literally been having? Because I've had that for so long. And the whole point of acupuncture is to increase the flow of you know, your circulation, yeah, yeah. the flow in your body. Maybe. What if it's just sorted itself out? Maybe. It's mad, isn't it? Probably the uh, NMA. Yeah. Or like, because I've been taking supplements, I've been taking NMA, I've been taking NAC. I haven't really had NAC in, in a while. I've had COQ10, which is another one. Maybe I'll speak about this more in depth, but I've had quite a lot of reproductive specific supplements that are supposed to help your reproduc re reproduction, that don't make sense. Anyway, how crazy is that? That's Wait, so, and I'm still confused, so you've got so nothing I, wrong with your fallopian tube? Yeah, so they didn't clip my fallopian tube, they didn't do anything for my fallopian tubes because they're fine, they did what? a dye test in both fallopian tubes, they're fine. Well, that's good. Yeah. But then, your ovaries are stuck to the something. Yeah, well that that's bad. that's bad, yeah. So what did they do with them ovaries? Put them away, like... You only she, get, you the only problem get two is, ovaries in your life. Yeah. So you've got no ovaries? No, you can, you can unstick them. them, which is, I'm assuming... This is the problem, because I said, oh, can I speak to my surgeon afterwards? She said, oh, she's in, a, like, she's in surgery until 8pm, so she literally can't come and speak to you. She's, but she's going to do a follow up within two to three months so I'm just going to make sure I'm on that because I need to know what's happened to two them two to three months, what's the point? she could have yeah. just done it around at this schedule in a little five minute thing straight after instead yeah. of in the same surgery hour well they normally do they literally normally do that you've got to wait two to three months go for all the admin of having to rebook it cost the NHS yeah. over 20 grand when they could just had a little quick 10 minute appointment on the back of every mm. surgery. You could just record you a video of the, the, the mm. nurse place. Yeah. That'd be so much more efficient, wouldn't it? Particularly the update, really. So have they fixed that over They've, issue there? The unstuck she did, This is the thing, she didn't have the information. She was like, I'm assuming they've unstuck it because the whole point, part of the operation was to treat the endo. So where does that stand you? For IVF. IVF because well, it puts me in a really good position now. No, but surely if you don't know what she's done, oh. you can't go ahead with IVF. Because surely that you need to. No, I need to be signed off. I think. What she's done, you know. Yeah. To find out. But I think you you can't have IVF after a laparoscopy for at least um, six to nine months. I think it is. Really? Yeah. There's a grid in the road. Oh God. That's not my fault. Dead slow. Why, Kyle? I don't know. Get some side effects. Drugs and all that. Yeah. 
Well, you have. You've just been had a painful operation, and you had loads of drugs. But the positives is that it was a success. You didn't die. And you've got a loving boyfriend. You're having your own. Gonna be your slave for a couple of days. I can't say slave, can I? You say slave. You're gonna be giving me tri you've princess got, treatment. You've got a loving boyfriend being your waiter, being your butler for the next few days. I love you. I love you. Is the, uh, which one is it? Is it Paris? Let's just Google it. Take codeine with Paris ibuprofen at the same time, please. You can take it. Yeah, yeah. Teach you how to give yourself a shot of anticoagulant medicine, also called a blood thinner. Blood thinner. Thin thingy. Yeah, yeah. You want to look at you trying to get the shot? <laughs> <laughs> just do something. <laughs> I think it's more important that you yeah, get it right. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> just get it right. Right, so. You're gonna kill me. You think about that? I think so. Three, two, one. Oh, that's so cute. You're Your batteries are out of there, but you can't really see it. Anymore. More than socket, that's so cute. Wow. Just this is so nice, thank you. Yeah. Uh, can I have a deep bath, please? Yeah. Can it even get a little black? Can you, can you guess how does it So that's like the most common time? thing. Um, it starts in the shoulder. Is it cured it? No. Yeah, the gas pain's definitely worse this time. I didn't well, think I had it at all last time, you did didn't I? Have it. You didn't have it in it. Because I think we were expecting it and you never got it. Yeah. And you were quite relieved that you hadn't. You was it in the shoulder? Do you remember it was starting in the it shoulder? Was in the shoulder and I think it moved around. Mm, when we was in Newton Youth. Yeah, I did. Because I just had the pain of it going down into this area. Yeah. And then that was sharp, but now it seems to go, go come back. Okay, so it's one day post up. It's the third Friday the thirteenth of October and I'm just doing some red light therapy. 
I'm actually doing it on my back because I've read that you're not supposed to do it on your incisions straight away. You're supposed to let your incisions heal a little bit um, before putting the red light directly on it. So I don't want to obviously mess that up. And obviously I'm doing this, um, I'm not doing this like in front of a doctor or anything so like don't try this at home <laughs> based off of what i'm doing essentially um but if you don't know what red light therapy is it is supposed to help with circulation blood flow um and healing as well so that's why i am using it right now it is weird that can you see that vein see that that's literally my vein Look how prominent that looks, and then look on that side. Oh my god. I think that's from the red light therapy, so... This one... Looks slightly more red. This is why you have to be careful. This is why you have to be careful, because... I did read that you're not supposed to... Do it directly on your incisions, because... It can, because of the blood flow, impacting the blood flow, it can create a space for more bleeding and obviously we don't want the incisions to bleed so i think that's enough today i only did a few minutes she's gonna down. stay in the lines like look at that for what? she's a cool dude though what? isn't she mm, looks a bit like what? What you yeah, thought yeah. Like yeah blue hair, hair. Yeah. that's actually what good next? for the mind though this well, just watching the girls bathroom podcast um i feel like i'm doing a lot better because i'm not i'm not got codeine i feel a lot more alert do you know what i mean yeah codeine just makes you feel like a zombie yeah you do look a bit more perky than yeah. usual okay you're doing bathroom. that you could be doing work and stuff no, no, i literally thought that well let's get get a couple of clients come gym again you can to come gym this is a good book isn't it yeah I can't wait to get started on that one. Because that's positivity. Yeah. That's negativity. So it depends what you, what kind of person you want to be. Yeah. Do you want to be in a, a negative mindset? Or you need or some empowering quotes. Mindset, I think you should stay to a positive mindset. Embrace your inner girl boss. It's a bit cliche it though, is, isn't it? It is very cliche. I didn't actually look at what the quotes were. You are beautiful. It's definitely been created by someone Women, like me. Women, strength forever. Been created by a guy, power. isn't it? A guy yeah. trying to make money on Amazon KDP Literally. and just created a little quick. This book. is Liam did a, a YouTube video on these, didn't you? Yeah, I've actually sell a few books. Yeah. yeah. So this is probably created by someone who's watched demand, your YouTube. No, but might have you watched your YouTube video? Yeah. I'm gonna shout Hank. <laughs> Hank, you're the best. I don't want no one looking at my toes because <laughs> they're ugly, but this has got magnesium in, magnesium salts. Well, yeah, she, she was really disappointing her. her. My mum wasn't even angry at me. It's about half past three on Friday the 13th of October. I had my surgery yesterday at um, <clears throat> about half past nine in the morning. Um, so it's just over 24 hours and I'm really feeling great this time round. Like my previous three surgeries were, well, my last surgery was good. The recovery was good, but this one just feels different. And I think it is genuinely because 
I've allowed my body to kind of work through the motions without having too much choline because choline bungs you, bungs you up which obviously if you're constipated with all of that healing going on inside your body that just makes it 10 times worse and also I'm very very sensitive to medication with my mental health so um, I really did want to try my best to do most of it without codeine because codeine just makes me severely depressed and I didn't want I didn't want that like I, I'm feeling really positive mentally now I know you'll see by this video that literally it's like a roller coaster like one minute I'm like doing breathing exercises killed over doing like cat cow and then the next minute I'm like like this like feeling good um I've just had this is TMI but if you're watching this video you definitely will not be someone to complain about TMI because that's the whole process of having surgery um I've just had my first poop <laughs> And it was painful, it was very painful, but now I feel so much, I feel, I feel buzzing that I literally managed to do this a day after surgery. My previous surgery is right, so my first and second surgery, I had to have, um, I literally had on my first surgery, bear in mind that it obviously depends on the surgeon and the experience level as well, um, with how your kind of recovery would go. My first surgery was like, proper botched job um came out of it had a really bad really hard recovery and i was literally on like taking oromorph i was taking uh, cannabis um i was on everything that i could get my hands on because the pain was unbearable and because i was on a, all those medications it obviously bummed me up i don't think i went to the toilet for like seven days and that made it way worse on top of that i was highly emotional crying all the time depressed just really bad whereas it just seems like day and night surgery one versus this surgery which is surgery four so i just wanted to kind of do that update because it's only been one day and i'm really feeling positive about this this surgery recovery I'm just panicking, I've got hypochondria. It's, it's because I did it, I shouldn't have done it. Mm. So now I'm panicking that I've got sepsis. You haven't got sepsis. You might have hit a little bit of a vessel, a little tiny vessel. Yeah. It's not like a major artery in it, <laughs> is it? Oh, that's nice. So it's now Friday, it's still the same day, um, but it's about half eight and I am in so much pain mate, seriously. My whole abdomen's so sore, my incisions are really sore, I feel like I've overdone it and I'm not rested enough today. To say it's literally one day post-op as well. But my sister came round to see me um for a few hours and she always makes me laugh and I was literally holding myself trying not to laugh on many occasions and I think that's I blame the laughter honestly because my stomach was giving every time I laughed um but that's the update I've had a codeine the first one today because I just was in unbearable pain um I've got a hanky bar over there, sleeping, and I'm gonna get my sleep mask on, have some water, and go to bed. It is Saturday the 14th of October with Tommy Fury and KSI fight. Yesterday was like up and 
about walking around like you can probably tell by the videos I was just kind of doing a lot and today I feel like I've taken a step back because I'm like yesterday was literally one day after surgery this is the second day since I've been home so now my body's like feeling it like feeling tired sore achy so I think I overdid it a little bit yesterday so I basically this is why I've been snuggling with Hank today I'm allowed to have a shower today so I really want to have a shower obviously the fight is on tonight though I really want to watch that and Liam really wants to watch that. I've eaten breakfast this morning. I went to the toilet. I've been to the toilet twice. Thank God. Oh my God, honestly, it's such a blessing because last time I didn't go to the toilet for about a week and I was in so much pain. My, I was so swollen. Really swollen. I need to have a shower because I feel dirty. Mm -hmm, Sonia. Oh my god, that's so cute! Who's it? It's from Ashlyn and Craig! Oh, oh yeah, should they ask for you as well? We hope your surgery went well and your recovery is spent with lots of breakfast in bed from Liam. From Liam? Oh, yeah. if all the gifts was from <laughs> Liam, like, well, it's done some of ours from me. That is so They look better when they they're need out, spruce in, yeah, don't they? Yeah, they need spruce in. They need Give them a bit of a <laughs> Oh, they're going to look so nice. I'll get a little shot of them actually in the bars. Okay. They're so cute. I am showered. I feel fresh. I'm brushing my hair. I've got a baggy t shirt on. I'm actually winning at life. <laughs> I'm feeling good. And the shower wasn't too bad, it wasn't too hard to manoeuvre with the help of my mum. It was alright. And this, this smells delicious. It's all right, Bobby. <laughs> Why are you so scared of it, Hank? It's on your megaphone. It's okay, look. What is it? <laughs> Sunday, the 15th of October. Um, and we are three days post-surgery, I think. Last night we had an Indian curry, which was a little bit of a risk because obviously you don't want to dodge your stomach after you've had surgery. But I really fancied one, so. Yeah, we had an Indian. Um, and today I think we're going to try and go on a little walk. Keep the protein up. This is swollen stomach. What? Oh, you video? Yeah. This is Swollen Stomach Update. I'm feeling quite swollen today. My stomach tight. I had an Indian curry yesterday. It was a little treat. That was a risk. I wouldn't have done it if I hadn't have gone to the toilet uh, yesterday, the day before. And we're going to go over a little small walk today. Which is amazing because last time I had surgery, I didn't go out until day five. Um, so just going to show you each recovery, completely different. <laughs> Oh, God, I look terrible. Oh, wow. 
Mm -hmm. These cigarettes are not healthy. Motherfucker's a wuss, and I'm a hell. Oh, peaky as hell. Yeah. Just. Looks absolutely delicious. Dreamies. Well, we've got pie, mash, roast potatoes, creamy leeks, and stuffing. Yum. Oh. What a little cute boy. Thank you. Hello, it is day four, I believe. <clears throat> Monday, the 16th of October. My mum's now gone home, and I am just about to watch Locken, who was in Love Island, the last series, maybe the time before that. Um, he does a lot of food videos and I've just seen him and Whitney um, tasting this mac and cheese so I'm going to watch that because that looks delicious and I kind of want to make a vegan version. Obviously not yet but <laughs> you know when I can cook again. Um, I was just in the middle of watching The Carrie Diaries which is like a younger version of Carrie from Sex and the City. It was out in 2013. I don't know how I missed it in 2013. But I've basically started watching that now. And I'm in si on series two. I'm going to have a break away from that and watch something. So it's going to probably want to make me eat the world. But let's give it a go. I'm going to guess something. And who other than Jessica. So on that note, Whitney, please join me in Lockdown Kitchen. Yeah! Whitney is literally me. This is literally what she just said. Mood. Who measures when they cook? People who measure when they cook. Cycles. <laughs> I actually felt so much more swollen today it was just my stomach was dead tight and they do say that um, by kind of day four or five your stomach tends to swell more because of the inflammation because of all of the um healing process or the blood that's getting, getting sent to the incisions to make the healing process go on i don't know if that makes sense but yeah <laughs> Just had a little cry. <laughs> just had a little cry. I'm just feeling a bit like fed up at the minute. We're on day four, I think, and it is ten to five. Just done my fifth injection. Um, blood, the blood thinning injections that Liam's been doing for me. Um, and then. For some reason, I'm just getting quite emotional, af emo emotional after them. And I know that it's probably to do with the side effects of all the drugs that I've had from surgery. Like, even just looking at some of the side effects um, of the pain relief that they give you. They include, like, depression, low mood, nausea, vomiting. Like, there's so many side effects from the drugs that they give you. Um, so I'm trying to kind of keep a bit of a rational head um and like telling myself it's normal you've had loads of drugs and it's probably it's probably why you're feeling emotional and up and down and it's a lot to go through go just going through surgery it takes a toll on your mental and physical well-being um and obviously i think just dealing with 
having your independence taken away from you temporarily. It's a lot, like it gets to a point where you're just like, I wanna make my own dinner and I wanna empty the dishwasher. I didn't think I'd be saying that. <laughs> but like, you know, when you see that something needs doing and you just wanna be able to do it. And, and I'm probably sounding really dramatic right now because like give it a week or give probably give it three or four days and I'll be I'll be back to doing some of those things. Um but yeah, I'm just feeling like I I feel really sick, feel proper nauseous. Um I don't feel comfortable down there, like I feel really irritated down down there. <laughs> um yeah, I'm just having an off day. I think that's totally normal though because I've been feeling so positive the last few days. You probably noticed that I was really positive. After coming out of my surgery, I was so positive. And so it's obviously normal to be like up and down, up and down. Other news, we have moved a plant to the, this corner of the room and I think it looks so nice there. I'll just get up so I can... Kind of show you properly. Oh. So we've got the hanging plant there. And then the big jungle, jungle themed plant there. And I think it looks really cute. Hang clean. Mm. They're really trying to get young people involved. It's like they're kind of reinventing cruisers. Well, yeah, well, that's the thing. Well, I've been watching, scared, like, right? no, I've been watching vlogs. They're like party cruisers that people yeah, like. Yeah, the Vita one in it, and I'm yeah. there. <clears throat> anyway, I just thought I'd record a little clip <laughs> as an update. Hand clean. Hand clean images recording. Just talking about Virgin Voyages cru cruises because loads of influencers are promoting them. <clears throat> and it's making us want to want to go on a cruise, but we've never wanted to go on a cruise in our life. <laughs> it makes you have FOMO. Anyway, I just want to do a little update on how I'm getting on. Here's the tongue. I don't think that's going to stay. Whoa. Here's the tongue. Still very swollen. It feels like bruised tender which is obviously all normal um and i am really proud because i've just gone on another walk i think this is like my third walk <clears throat> since my surgery which was about six days ago was it six days ago babe friday saturday night? sunday monday tuesday wednesday six days ago <clears throat> and my pace was actually quite <clears throat> Like a normal walking pace, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, we only went for about 10 minutes, but every little win. Now we're going to go and watch, what are we watching? Payback, yeah. Payback on ITV. Time. Hello, it is five weeks post-op. Um, the last time I spoke to you, I think it was about six days post-op. So I've had a good, decent amount of time to actually um, progress, recover, recuperate. And I am honestly feeling really good by this point. I think kind of four or five week mark, um, the NHS website says you should really be like back to your normal routine, um, back to your normal kind of exercise routine, that kind of thing. I started going back to the gym about a week, just over a week ago. Uh, it was around about the four week mark. The first week I literally did just walking on the treadmill for half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, and then this week, this past week, week up until today, I have just been doing, I did a really light weight workout on Monday. Um, I've been doing a lot of stretching um, and just not avoiding, by the way, that's like hot chocolate or something <laughs> spilled earlier. I've just been doing kind of anything that's avoiding like heavy core, ab exercises um anything outside of that i've been doing i did i'm not joking on monday part of my um upper body session i just was like oh i'll do a little bit legs did some walking lunges i literally did like probably about 20 walking lunges that's it then stopped 
I have had the worst arms since Monday and still now my legs are in bits. So it just goes to show you like, you need to take it slow when you're getting back into a workout routine. And so that's exactly what I've been doing. I've been listening to my body. Um, had a few days off the gym since that heavy, heavy uh, walking lunge session. Um, and then next week I'm hoping to do two weight sessions and then I'll keep on increasing it. So three weight sessions the week after. Um, and in between that, I've been resting a lot. I have been using my red light therapy. I think that that's really worked. Um, it's been really great. And I'm gonna show you my scars now because they are actually looking really good. Um, and I honestly do think the red light therapy is, is helping. So my tummy, compared to the last clip, it's definitely gone down. The swelling's gone down. Now it's just, I'm just left with um, the fact that I need to get rid of, really, because I have, obviously, because I've been so inactive, I have put on some weight. Um, not an issue, um, but I do feel super, super unfit. I just can't wait to get my fitness level back because... I say on the treadmill, I just feel like so sluggish and I want a bit of pizzazz back in my life. Anyway, so the actual scars, so here's one of them. I should have actually filmed this on my camera, I'm on my phone, sorry. And then one of them is inside my belly button. The glue on this was the last to come off. It literally came off about two days ago, whereas all the glue on these ones... Um, came off within kind of a week, two weeks. There's one of them. And yeah, so one, two, that's from a previous surgery. So one, two, three, and then four. So I had four incisions last this time. Last time I only had three incisions. Um, I don't think they look too bad to be fair. To say it's literally been five weeks um so yeah that's my surgery and recovery video i hope um it was helpful i hope those of you who are about to go in for your laparoscopy hope this has helped you i feel like this time around has been a very very positive experience um and sometimes it's really reassuring to watch these kinds of videos um especially if you're kind of anxious about surgery if you have got this surgery coming up, there's nothing to worry about. You are absolutely in safe hands um, and just make sure that you are fully equipped and prepped and you've got a lot of support around you for post-op. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. I have got some more content coming to YouTube. I'm back to YouTube now and um, yeah, so look out for those videos and I'm also going to be posting on my podcast as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon.